Great. <laughs> um, I've never been recorded before, so hopefully I'm not uh, too boring, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm just going to start and kind of tell you uh, my background in photography and some of my projects and what it's like to be a photographer. Um, I'm 25 years old, so I've been doing this for two years, so I'm, I'm pretty new to everything. I haven't been doing this my whole life. Uh, I'm from Minnesota, so kind of the opposite of New Mexico. We have winter forever, and it's terrible. Um, but I grew up in a family that was not at all artistic. My dad was an engineer, my brother was an engineer, um, my parents were from mining town. So being an artist to them was kind of like, yeah, you're not going to make any money, but good luck. <laughs> so when I decided to become a photographer, it was because um, I had a friend who was doing it and he told me, yeah, Sarah, sometimes you're kind of, you know, socially awkward. Why don't you try just photographing people and see what it's like? So he gave me a camera and I started to photograph for fun. Um, and the first project I did was my sister. She's five years older than me. And if any of you guys have siblings, you know that kind of bond you have. Me and her were really close. And she was going through a really hard time in life. She had an eating disorder and she was kind of being really distant. And I was thinking, okay, what if I just photograph her? Because I don't know how to actually communicate with her. I have so many questions I want to ask her, but I'm not sure how to do that. So I called her and I was like, hey, this might sound awkward, but what if I photograph you for a weekend. I'm trying to, you know, work on a project. I'm trying to see what it's like to photograph my family. And she was like, yeah, that's kind of weird, but sure, you can photograph me. So I went to visit her and I was 19 at the time and I just started to photograph her. I asked her questions, we went on a road trip. Um, and it was my first time realizing that, wow, photography actually is a really good way of listening to other people. It's not just news, it's not just fashion, it's not just art. It's actually a really good way to communicate. And I realized that if, you know, even for myself personally, if I can photograph my sister and get close to her, it's kind of a really, really awesome thing. So that's what led me to realize that I really wanted to actually become a photographer in the first place. Um, so what happened was I was going to school for youth development. I wanted to be a social worker of some kind. Um, growing up, I had a kind of a hard time with my family and I always wanted to do something that could help other people my own age. And, you know, I was thinking, when I was younger, I felt like no one listened to me. No one listened to my friends. Um, if anything, there would just be news articles online saying, you know, this high school is this percent of suicide rate or this percent of drug rate. And I felt like being young, we were just used as facts for the magazine. And no one actually cared about us. So when I got into photography, I wanted to try to combine those two things. Like, what if we could focus on youth and youth culture? and photography and really communicate about all these kinds of issues that are happening. Um, to me, that would be the best of both worlds. And I'd never really seen people do that. So when I was 22 years old, I decided to move to New York. My parents were sending me emails like, don't do it, you're gonna ruin your life, you're not gonna make any money. Um, but I decided to come to New York and go to a school called ICP. Um, it's called the International Center of Photography and it's a very small school. But they have a one-year program that's about documentary photography. And I decided to do that program. And I told them when I came, hey, I have no experience. Uh, I have a camera, that's it. I want to do stories about youth culture. And they were like, sure, just try it out, see how it fits you. So I had one year in New York to work on this school. And we had to do certain projects there. And I think you guys have seen some of my website or some stuff I've done. Um, but when I was in New York, I decided to do a project about young people growing up in the South Bronx. And it's a really harsh place to grow up. Um, the media constantly is telling really negative stories about that area, about murder and crime. No one even wants to go there. And when you go there, you realize it's, it's not even that bad. It's just really hyped up. So I went there and I met this group of kids who were 14 years old. Um, and they were freshmen in high school. And I told them, hey, I'm a student in school. I want to do a project about your lives. I don't know you. This might be kind of weird, but how would you feel about that? And they were like, uh, if you want to, we don't really know why we're interesting, but sure. Um, and this led to like a really long project. It was my first time doing an actual documentary work with kids. Um, and I filed them now. They're going into their senior year of high school. So it's been almost what, three years. Um, and that's been just an incredible experience of, of watching these kids grow up. Um, but what I want to say to you guys just about, you know, if you want to be a photographer, what it's like to um, work in the industry is that it's a really complicated profession. And, you know, back in the day when photojournalism was just becoming, you know, very popular, it was 
kind of exclusive. It was a, an old men club, so to say. If you're European and wealthy, you are a photographer. And you have that classic narrative of kind of wealthy, older white men going into you know, the ghetto, into the urban city, and photographing poverty and violence and, and gangs, and selling it to magazines like a, a movie. Um, and that's how things were done for a really long time. So when I came into the industry, I was a bit like, I hope that changes because I don't want to be part of that, you know? And the one thing that I found really awesome about at least our generation, like I said, I'm 25, you guys are a bit younger. Um, for sure, your generation is that that doesn't work anymore. Nobody wants that. Um, and no one's looking for that. So the narrative has really, really changed. And people actually want to hear your own stories. So no longer are they wanting to send people into different towns, different countries to report, but they're actually asking, what kind of stories are going on in your town? What's New Mexico like? What's your family like? Um, what kind of problems are facing you and your friends? Like, tell us that story. And I think it's a really exciting time to be part of this industry because that's really changed. Um, can you guys still hear me? Am I talking too fast? We can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I tend to talk really fast, so if you can't hear me, just, just slow me down. But, um, you know, one thing I've learned as well uh, is that photography is all about asking questions. It's not about answering them. And sometimes when I read the news, or when I read certain photo essays, it, it really seems like people are just trying to prove their point. Like, show, they're showing a story in their perspective, and that's it. Um, you know, and that's the reason I became a photographer, is because I really, I believe in asking questions. I believe in being curious. And I'm super curious, you know, um, when I'm asking questions to someone, it's, it's not just these vague questions like, what's it like to be young? Like, I really want to know what's it like to live in your town? What are you going through? Like, how can we show your story to other people? And, and that's something that really only photography can do. I mean, it's, it's kind of really beautiful that way. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in being a photographer, um, my biggest piece of advice to you would be find topics that you're interested in. Um, you know, the media right now, no one trusts the media. There's fake news. Everything is so divided. Um, so it's really good just to put that aside and just focus on topics that you really care about. Um, you know, for all the projects I've done, like I said, I, I'm, I'm really new to all this. I've only done about three, three projects total, but they all have a really similar theme. And, you know, I'm, I'm really curious in young people and youth culture. And in particular, I, I really want to know how we pass down traditions to them. You know, why are certain cultures more religious? Why are certain cultures having more military draw? Like, I'm really curious at that, um, that, that aspect of life. And to me, it doesn't make sense. And that's why I'm always questioning it. So every project I approach, I try to make it really about what I want to know and discover. And having this certain theme and this certain path of my work that I think is really important. Um, I have a lot of friends who are photographers and they just photograph everything. They want to photograph nature and environments and the news and celebrities. And you can do that if you want, but it generally just doesn't work out. It's just better to find the thing that you really care about. Maybe your thing is the environment. Maybe your thing is youth culture like mine. Maybe it's news. It's just really good to know what you want to find out. Um, and that being said, you really have to know yourself. You have to know the things that keep you awake at night, the things that bother you. Um, you need to be okay with your family situations and kind of your background and what, what makes you you as a person, you know? Um, that's all really, really important. Um, so for myself, when I decided to, um, well, when I wanted to combine my, my passion for youth and youth culture and photography, um, I tried to focus on stories that were about those two things. So kind of, I can tell you a bit of my journey. So after school, when I graduated, I was super overwhelmed. I thought, okay, how am I gonna get a job? I'm in New York, I have no money. Um, this is all very intimidating. Uh, I decided to go to Russia to do a project. And my background is Russian, my dad's side. I lived there for a few years. Um, but I decided to fly there because honestly, it was cheaper than living in New York. In Russia, I can live on like no money at all. Um, I decided to go there and to work on a project about young people and patriotic education. And you've probably seen this work online, but we have similar things here in the US. Just in Russia, it's just really widespread, really massive. There's a lot of uh, youth who are really crazy about these uh, patriotic camps. So I spent about six months working there on this project and photographing, um, camping out with all the kids, spending all the time I could with them to really get to know what was happening. Um, and I had my first kind of negative lesson about being a photographer. 
um, I think I lost sight of you. Here you are. Um, what happened to me was I came back and I published the work with a magazine. And I thought, oh my God, it's my, it's my first magazine. I'm so excited. Um, but it turned out to be a really negative experience. Uh, the way this magazine phrased the story was, you know, wow, look at what they're doing in Russia. They're so crazy. Um, kind of Cold War style, like they're training their youth to be in the military. This is terrible. And I read the article thinking, oh my God, all my friends in Russia are never going to talk to me again because they kind of took my story and used it really dramatically. Um, and it wasn't even true. And that was my first experience realizing, you know, you can work really hard on a project and really care about it and then, you know, give it to a media organization and they just use it for their own agenda, which is terrible. <laughs> so what I decided after that was that I wanted to really counter the story and, and show people, yeah, you can't just criticize other countries, other people, other religions without looking in the mirror first. And that's why this whole year, since January, I've been working on a new project about the same subject here in the United States. So my goal was kind of to show um, we have the same kind of camps. We have, we have so much patriotism. We have so much nationalism. Like everything that's happening here is really comparable to Russia. And I really wanted to counter that. But, you know, it was really my, my first experience realizing, yeah, this is a really tough industry. You have to really protect your work and make sure it's not used in negative ways um, and not be too eager, you know. Um, but that's the other project I'm working on now is kind of continuing that work in Russia. Um, but as I said before, uh, my approach to photography and what I'm doing is it's not about chasing news stories. It's not about, um, you know, photographing everything I can find. It's about really finding the topics. And I can't stress that enough. It's about finding the things that you really care about and working on it. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, things are, are really changing and the dynamics are changing and what people want in the photo world is really changing. I mean, there are certain stories that only you can tell as an individual. I don't know anything about what it's like to grow up in your family or your town, or your high school. Um, I know nothing about New Mexico. I mean, you have stories that really only you can tell. And that's the advantage of being a photographer is finding those stories. So, you know, what we see all the time online in magazines and the media is people stereotyping. You know, you want to see poverty? I'll show you poverty. You want to see a bad situation? I'll show it to you. We just kind of reinforce negative stereotypes and narratives. And that's the one thing I would really say that's why I believe in photography is that you can really change that. You can show people, no, it's not like that, or it may be like that, but let me show you my story. Let me show you a different perspective. Let me show you what it's really like, because people don't know. They're sitting in New York in their offices. They're so far away from your lives. Um, you know, and what we should do as photographers is really break stereotypes and try to fight fear. You know, as we all see right now in our country, it's so divided. People are so angry. No one is talking to each other. So it, in one way, it's a really hard time to be a journalist or to work in the media. But on the other hand, it's the perfect time because everyone really wants to be heard. And there's so much room to work and there's a huge need for actual understanding. Um, and not just promoting our politics, not just promoting our ideas, but really listening to other people. Um, so, you know, one thing about your generation and mine is that we, we grew up with social media and we grew up with our phones and Facebook. And that sounds, you know, very cliche and obvious, but in a sense, we're really comfortable with sharing our lives already. We're comfortable with sharing stories. We always look online for pictures. Um, our lives are pretty saturated with it. So, you know, in, in my experience, you know, being relatively new to this field, that has really helped me. So instead of just waiting for a job, I would just post stories on Instagram or post them on my own website. I would kind of put my own work out there instead of waiting for someone to come to me. Um, and that's something unique about, I think, being our age is that we can do that pretty confidently. And, and you know, people older wouldn't necessarily think of doing that. Um, and that has actually, you know, really, really helped me too. Um, so another thing too is if you're, if you are wanting to go into this field, if you are wanting to be a photographer, um, there are so many opportunities that weren't there even five years ago. Um, like I mentioned before, you know, the, the old photo world used to be really elite and exclusive and very European and very, very male dominant. Um, and as I mentioned, that's really changing. So I sent you that PDF of different photographers that I find very inspiring that I would recommend checking out. Um, but the first girl on the list, uh, Daniela Zelkman, she started um, something called Woman Photograph. And it's a database of all female photographers. 
And she sent that around to all editors and really challenged, you know, how the industry was. So up until a few years ago, it was like probably 90% males were taking all the pictures for all the news sources. I mean, that's so uneven that it's, it's pretty, pretty bad. So she started this database for any, any young woman who wants to be a photographer who's working can sign up and enroll in this website. And from there, editors can find you and kind of help you out in your career. So that thing is really, really incredible. That's a very, very new thing. Um, also, there's a guy named Jose Rivas. I think I might have sent you his work in a PDF as well, but I'm not sure. Um, he's, he's an indi uh, indigenous photographer, and he started a, a database called Native Photograph. And it's all Native people from North America and South America coming together to form their own database as well, saying, OK, stop telling our stories for us. We want to speak for our own communities. If you want our stories, come find us this way. So there's a lot of more you know, initiative being taken by people and from editors actually looking for those kinds of stories. Um, and also, at the same time, they're looking for young people. I mean, they want a fresh perspective. They don't want people who don't understand what it's like to be young to just try to photograph it, you know? So there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and it is, like I said, it's a really hard time as well to be doing it because there's not as many jobs. It's a lot harder to, to find work. Um, but if you're self-driven, if you know what you care about, if you love photography, um, it's fantastic and I couldn't encourage it enough. Um, I don't want to keep rambling about, you know, my life. I feel a bit awkward just talking at your faces. Um, do you guys have any questions? We can go from there. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Sydney. Okay. And, I, and I'm the chief editor. And I'm also the editor of the world section. Okay. So I have two questions. So you said that being a photojournalist, it's like listening to other people and getting a different perspective on the story. So when you do that, is it hard to not get emotionally involved when you're seeing all these different things? Yeah, it's impossible not to. I mean, that's the hardest part of doing all of this is being so emotionally connected to everyone. It's, it's very traumatic sometimes. Um, but at the same time, I think you, you have to. You, you can't tell a story without having empathy. And that's also why I said to be careful of the stories you choose. You know how to be aware of how much you can handle. Um, I've had lots of friends quit. I've had lots of friends get killed in work from being in bad places. I mean, it just, it's really, really important to choose your stories carefully. Um, but yeah, getting emotionally involved is just, it's part of life. I've had people tell me, it's not necessary. You can protect yourself. You can, you know, be a bit colder. But I, I don't agree with that at all. I think it's impossible not to. And it's just part of it. I mean, that's part of even talking to someone you meet at a coffee shop or a bar or wherever you are. I mean, that's just part of human relations is that kind of feeling. Um, but yeah, you have to be really careful about it. And maintaining your perspective, too. So I do a lot of stories with people I don't agree with at all. I mean, completely disagree with them. And it's really easy to get sucked in and go, yeah, actually, I can see why you think that. And then the next day, go, wait, no, no, I don't agree with you. You have to be really careful, you know, not to be too empathetic where you lose your morals as well. OK, thank you. Um, which project did you find the most difficult? My current project. Your current so working here in the US, yes. So I worked in Russia, like I said, all last year. And I found that people were very inviting to me. Um, I speak Russian, but I'm an American, so everyone was very, um, you know, curious. Why do you speak Russian? What are you doing here? Why are you photographing us? And they were very inviting, uh, and it was just easy to photograph there. And now that I'm doing the work here in the U.S., it's been the complete opposite. Um, I'm trying to work <laughs> in high schools and with young people, and I was photographing at a JROTC event in Kentucky. And you know, every school has some kind of army group, or JROTC is very common. And it's not too crazy to photograph. But I was there, and the leader, he came up to me, and he said, uh, so what are you doing this for? Um, what are you working on? I explained the project, and then he says to me, well, are you going to call us the alt-right? Because I'm pretty sure you're going to call us the alt-right. And I had to say, no, don't worry. Like, I'm not doing a story that's completely against you. I would never use that word. And he was really mistrusting. So it's, it's been hard to work here because everything that's happening politically, people are much more defensive. Um, for a good reason. They're afraid of being taken advantage of. And I've just found, you know, traveling in the US, it's a bit harder to, to make those connections. Um, and this project is also very hard for me because I'm working with a lot of things I don't agree with at all. Um, I didn't grow up in a military family. It's a lot for me to get used to and to understand. 
Um, I've been around a lot of people with completely different political spectrum and ideas, and it's been just very hard to keep an open mind. So for me, this year has been the most challenging, and it still is. <laughs> it's been kind of a mess, to be honest, but it's, it's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your questions. Okay, so my name is Rachel, and I'm the editor for the school and community section. And uh, I wanted to know if you have like different techniques you use if you want to appeal to like a different audience for different projects. Um, can you repeat that one more time? I wanted to know if you have like different techniques you use when you put together your photos, if you want to appeal to a different audience than you normally appeal to. Uh, in terms of like publication or when I'm photographing? Um, either way. Either way. Um, Sometimes I do, but I tend to not change too much. Um, I think that can get tricky if you're trying to be too many things to too many people, you know, to get access or to get publication. I, I tend to just try to be the same person to no matter who I'm talking to or who I'm approaching. Um, sometimes I have to, you know, change my rhetoric and change my descriptions, um, use different kinds of words. Uh, just to really learn who you're talking to and how they think like is important. But you also just want to be genuine. If you, if you don't know the topic that well, or if you feel uncomfortable, you can just be awkward and feel awkward. I think people appreciate a real person, you know? So um, I don't tend to change it too much. I think that can get kind of tricky. Um, with publication, I can. If I'm, if I'm trying to work with a different kind of publisher or a different editor, I can rephrase it um, or make it a bit angled towards what they care about. Um, you know, the story with the kids in the Bronx, I've had a hard time deciding, you know, what kind of outlet I want to pitch it to. And I think sometimes it's really good to publish locally. You know, if you're photographing a local community, you should publish it locally, in my opinion, so they can read it. They should be your audience, not, you know, someone off in Europe or something. Um, it's not bad to publish big either, but it just has to determine um, what kind of audience you want, if that makes sense. <coughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Lucia, and I'm the editor of the region section. Um, I was wondering, like you said that um, you try to choose projects that mean something to you, but where do you get the ideas for this? Like, where did you suddenly decide to go to Russia and hear about this patriotic camp and do all of that? Uh, that came just from different life experiences. So, I mean, the first part of your question, yeah, finding things you're interested in, that just took a lot of self-realization and usually things that we care about come from trauma and hard places so it's not easy to really find out but for me like I had a quite a strange family situation I had to leave home when I was younger and it took a long time for me to realize that I'm, I'm drawn to these topics because I'm, I'm really curious how how you achieve anything in life when the odds are against you you know how do you find your own morals and your own ideas your, your own identity when it's kind of forced upon you so for me that that topic was really important to me in general. But how I found the actual stories, the one in New York I found because I met this kids kind of randomly. What's so funny? <laughs> Is it working still? Oh, it just started again. Ah, oh no, what, what did you, what did I leave off on? What did you hear last? Um, picking your topics and making them around like your world. Okay. So, um, yeah, I can say like the, the topics that I found in particular, um, they actually came quite randomly. Uh, I didn't do a lot of research trying to find something, but I had been living in Russia for two years before I came to New York. And one of my friends sent their kids to this patriotic class. I remember thinking, I've never heard of a patriotic class. Like, what do they teach you? What does that even mean? Um, and I emailed her and said, hey, can I come back and visit and just go to the class with you? Um, I had no idea that it would turn into this lifelong project. Um, it just happened kind of naturally. So for me, it was something that stuck out to me that I realized I know nothing about that. I'm very curious. Um, other projects come from, like I was mentioning, you know, trauma in our own lives or things that we went through. Um, you know, I had a lot of friends drop out of high school when I was younger. I had kind of a, not the best community to grow up in. So when I met the boys in the South Bronx, I was like, wow, I want to do a project about something that I can kind of relate to of, of my growing up. Or I can relate to these topics or I want to learn more about what it's like for them. So kind of randomly I think I approach subjects but they all come from something kind of central like the topics I'm drawn to. Um, some of them I do research more so for the project in the US 
I realized after Russia, hey, I really want to do the same kind of thing. I like this topic. Um, I like this age group. So I just Googled, you know, do we have any patriotic clubs here? Um, what parts of the US are the most, you know, militaristic that I can interview kids? I did a lot of research for this project. So for me, it just depends on the project. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Zach, and I am the sports editor. And I have two questions for you. Um, the first question is, which project of your own are you most fond of? Most fond of? That's a hard question. Um, I think it would be the project I did with the, the boys in New York, um, because that's the project that really taught me how to be a photographer. Um, that was the longest project I have, and it's still ongoing. Um, and that project for me was just a way to also watch people grow up. So it's been really amazing to have a project go for four years. And it's the only project that I'm not doing it for publication. So it's really just for myself. So I think I'm fond of it because it has no goal or no narrative. I'm kind of just letting it happen. And it's something I really connect with. And also, I had, I had no idea I'd become good friends with these students. And now they're like my best friends. So when I go back to New York City, you know, my best friends are all these 14, 15 year old boys I should not be hanging out with for any real reason. But they really, they really impacted my life. I mean, that's, that's a good project when it changes you as a person too. So that one I'm, I'm the most fond of because it's just the most personal. It was my first project ever in school. Um, it's the most important to me. Okay, and I got one more question. Um, how did it feel having to write for a magazine that targeted male audiences as a, as a woman? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very, very hard, I think. And I think that's the challenge that we're facing a lot. Um, I try not to ever do that where it's specifically against my demographic. Um, I think it's always better to write who understand you. Um, but it's, it's hard. I just, like I said before, in one of the last questions, I try to always be the same person. Um, so not trying to be something different or trying to write different, not changing your rhetoric, tone of voice, but just really completely being you, um, speaking honestly, uh, speaking from your perspective, no matter who the audience is. Um, I think there's ways, you know, of course, to be empathetic and to tie in, I don't know, tie in certain ways to connect people to your work who might not be the same gender or nationality or anything, but you have to always kind of just stick to being yourself. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's also a very, very hard question. Excuse me. Hello. Um, my name is Sage Addington, and I'm the editor for the arts and culture section. And we only have about four minutes until class is over, so oh, I want to know, so um, <laughs> do you have any goals you would like to achieve as a photojournalist? Yeah, I have a lot of goals. I hope I get to them someday. Um, I want to eventually do more than just journalism. Um, I think sometimes our stories stop on paper, and I would really like to do something where it went beyond that. So instead of just focusing on a publication or on an article, I would like to make material for schools, you know, put in new education systems or make a film, something that kind of went just beyond what I'm doing now. And I think those are pretty common and kind of, you know, huge dreams, but I would really like to see work that actually was impactful. Um, sometimes I worry that what we do doesn't affect as many people as I'd like it to. Um, so yeah, my, my dream would be the next thing would be an exhibition or something that people could come visit and see in person. Um, maybe making a book so you can mail to people so it kind of travels to more places than online. Um, yeah, that's that's what I would love. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to just awkwardly get up now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so are you guys writers or photographers or are you doing both? We're <laughs> newspaper. So newspaper, we, everything. Yeah, we kind of do a little bit of everything just to get our the students to like get a sense of what they want to do. So we okay. switch. So who here likes photography more? A few people. <laughs> like this side of the classroom, the other side is the writers. 
That's really cool. Yeah, let's take a look at your website. It's it's pretty awesome. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Do you guys do the whole thing yourself? The whole website? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sage does it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great job. Nice. And who did the design for it? That's something I want to learn. Maybe you guys can teach me how to design web pages. <laughs> nice. That's actually super hard. So good job. <laughs> cool. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>